My name is Harvey Turner. Thank you for following along to the origins of mankind. Chapter three, global megalithic commonalities. My original plan for this topic was to simply showcase the global examples of scoops and nubs, the stone hogging, and the ancient impossible stonework found around the world, all of which suggest the ability to soften quartz-rich stone. And there are also global examples of inside corners, huge saw blade cuts, drill holes, and clamp pinnings. And these indicate ancient, hardened, and enormously powerful and precise industrial tools. But in the last year, videos by my favorite YouTubers have shown us plenty of these photos and videos. It's undeniable. We get it. Scoops and nubs and hogging are global. But they are all not mentioning one key commonality, and that last item is what I'm going to present to you in this video. Egypt has examples of all of these listed items, and the rest of the world's megalithic locations have most of them. Scoops and nubs and stone softenings and more. A global civilization and its technology was destroyed, wiped clean, about 12,000 years ago. All that we have to theorize by is the impossible stoneworks that we can't do today. After 12,800 years, that's all that's left for us to gawk at. Yet a minute ago, I stated that there is still one key global megalithic commonality that needs to be discussed, and it is this. The next time you're watching an ancient stoneworks video, or if you're so fortunate as to actually be there, while you're oogling the perfection and impossible stonework of the walls, well, look down. There is no floor. Gorgeous walls and no floor. There never is. You've seen these ancient places before, but did you notice the lousy bedrock floor? Rough bedrock or just dirt? What the hell? And how about some steps? Why is it that the steps are always very crude when compared to the wondrous, amazing walls that they lead up to? Why is this polygonal mastery and stonework perfection only in the walls? Why don't we ever see anybody reaching down and trying to fit a human hair or credit card in between the fitted stones in the floor? Okay, I've made my point. And I'm not a disbeliever. I'm a Brian Forrester fan. I just wanted to point out a huge global commonality here. For every impossible, amazing, megalithic, gorgeous, crazy wall, you are standing on bedrock or dirt. Why is that? And this question has a lot of simple answers, and these answers point to an enlightening possibility. But before I share that possibility, let me slow down a little and also share this thought with you first. The city of Pompeii was buried in ash almost 2,000 years ago, and when it was rediscovered, the technology and luxury of that lost day re-emerged. In the year AC 079, the Romans had brass and silversmiths, and their floors were ornate with scenics in colorful ceramic tile. The floors in their homes and their stores and their bathing halls were very important to them, Hundreds of stunning ceramic tiled floors have been uncovered and rediscovered. Today, we are no different from our lost ancestors. In fact, if there was a cataclysm right now, we have laid down enough gorgeous stone floors that even a huge meteorite couldn't erase them all. Our walls, likely, will crumble and deteriorate, perhaps, but not the polished, perfect granite floors. Buried, yes, but not destroyed. 12,000 years from now, our stunning granite floors will still be there. The surfaces that we walk on and live on are very important to us. We put our detail and our money and effort into our floors. Even in our homes, in our kitchens and patios, we are ground dwellers and we love and live on our floors. And just like the Romans with Pompeii, and just like the Egyptians of 5,000 years ago. But Baalbek, Giza, Coricancha, Ollante Tambo, 
Machu Picchu, Serapium, Osaka, the Osirian, and several other ancient sanctuaries go back much, much further, and all of them don't have any gorgeous steps or floors. They show the global commonalities in their walls, but no impossible floors or steps. Isn't it obvious? Do you see where I'm going with this? The people whom built and lived in these structures knew how to levitate. They weren't concerned with the floor or the steps. They freaking floated. And if they could levitate, then they could fly. No need for boats either. I know this sounds absurd. I can only ask you to look again at the megalithic stonework of the world and think about it. There are a lot of seemingly impossible things that we have figured out in this world in recent decades and centuries. And temporary atomic valence separation is going to be the next big one. When we figure out how to suspend atomic structure rather than break it, well, we are no longer going to be ground dwellers. And now I'm going to go just one step further. In Egypt, sitting in the sand near the pyramids of Abu Ghraib, are several quartz vessels. I'm not sure what else to call them. They are pure quartz. Nobody knows what they were used for. Many have speculated about various odd and even gross ideas. Hmm. I think that it's lift or levitation. There's something special about quartz. To summarize, they, whomever they were, didn't put their effort into their floors. It was privacy and separation that they wanted. Walls. They had an understanding and full control of atomic valence separation, and thus they could interrupt gravity, as well as temporarily soften some molecular combinations, including quartz-rich stones like diorite and granite. Something incredible was happening here on Earth 14,000 years ago, and it ended abruptly about 12,800 years ago. What was our actual role in this time period? Innovator or outsider? Leader or laborer? Clearly we survived this mystery chapter in our human history. We rose from the ashes, yes, but what was our actual role in this stonework before the end arrived? And what must we relearn before we are able to do this again? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe or share. My next video will be short and simple. It is, we call ourselves mammals, but... Thank you for following along to the origins of mankind. Our eyes are now being opened to the logical story of what happened and why here on Earth only 13,000 years ago. Please enjoy my next chapter. Thank you.